right, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with the summer transfer and moved to Arsenal. Uh, where we are right now, so nondescript, we moved to another hotel. The FIFA guys chucked us out of the uh, classy one, and we've gone to one. Listen, it ain't bad, it ain't bad, but uh, a larder in the background, I thought, you know, to create the scene. Uh, classic Russian car. I remember my um, my uncle back in Jamaica used to have one of these, man. <laughs> it had so much filler on it, trust me, right, after he'd finished with it. But anyway, um, do you know what? Um, some fantastic games yesterday, weren't there? I mean, um, the World Cup so far has not disappointed. And uh, there were some great games yesterday. Germany losing. Uh, not the greatest of games for our boy Mesut Ozil. Uh, not the greatest of games for any German player, but Mesut Ozil, of course, our boy. And um, he didn't have the greatest of games in that. And then after that, um, Switzerland, they got a great draw against Brazil. And uh, Stefan Lichsteiner, um, you know, he's, he's getting a bit of criticism in the game for, uh, you know, the fact that their back four was getting exposed a lot. But it was against Brazil, and he wasn't getting no help from Shakiri in front of him. And... Um, Granit Xhaka, not spectacular, but not bad. And that was a great, great point for Switzerland. Um, so the World Cup's really, um, really, really hotting up. And then, of course, tonight, the big one, England, uh, they're going to be starting off with their first game. I don't think Danny Wilbert will start, unfortunately, but he might get on at some stage. But uh, really, really looking forward to it. There's lots of England ta fans in town, loads of Tunisians. I'd say, at the moment, the Tunisians outnumbering... Um, the English fans, of course, there's been a lot of English fans have been put off from coming to Russia. My advice to them is Russia's all right. I've, I've, I've been enjoying it so far out here in Russia. Uh, what you can't see behind you right now is a cameraman holding the camera. His eyes, they're all red. He's, I wouldn't even want to turn it round on him right now, right? Because this guy looks like a guy half dead because they were out last night. I was a sensible one because I knew I got to do transfer daily. So I kind of reined it in a bit. But he's totally smashed behind that camera. Anyway, transfer rumours today. Being linked with a centre-back um, who plays for Toulouse. He goes by the name of Issa Diop. Valued at around about 25 million euros. Now, um, French media reporting that um, Arsenal are taking a close look at this guy. Um, really, really interested in signing him. If they are going to sign him, they're really going to have to hurry up. Because I think uh, West Ham will be making a lot of moves in the... Uh, transfer market of course they've got Pellegrini in they're said to be the favorites they're said to be the guys that are really really in for him hard right now but Arsenal are interested the only thing is uh, with Arsenal is that he's not their plan A their plan A obviously they're bringing in Socrates um, as I said to you that's going to be announced on July the 1st and they're still looking at Kagla Siyonku but this guy as well is a guy that's interested in them but he's not the first choice but they may, may make a move for him. Maybe if one of those other deals falls through, West Ham's still the favourite for him. But Issa Diop, um, decent player. Really emerging player over there in France. And um, if Arsenal are not able to get some of their other targets, maybe he might be an option. Um, Alexander Golovin, he's a talk of the town over here in Russia right now. Everybody, every Russian fan, as soon as I say to him, Golovin, they're like, oh, yes, 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 yes. Right, um... He's their main guy at the moment. He scored that great goal um, the other day, uh, the free kick for Russia against Saudi Arabia. And he's still being linked heavily with Arsenal and Juventus today. Juventus are said to have made a concrete offer already of around about 13 million pounds, which has been rejected by CSKA Moscow. They won about 23 million. Arsenal said to be you know, willing to go up near that, um, but they're monitoring the situation. A lot of it could hinge on what happens with Jack Wilshire. Now, as I've been reporting for quite a few days, it's starting to look like Jack might go. <laughs> Camera's moving around. He's moving around behind me, yeah, right? He's not steady on his feet. Um, Jack Wilshire could go. Um, he's still not signed a new deal. Uh, he's said to be offered a good deal of over £100,000 a week, plus add-ons. Um, but it looks like Jack Wilshere, as I said, he wants guaranteed football, which he's not going to get guaranteed football. Apparently, he had uh, talks of Unai Emery and Unai Emery saying that, listen, we cannot guarantee you that you're going to be starting every week, but we, we do want you to be part of the team. So if uh, Jack Wilshere goes, 
um, the possibility of Alexander Golovin coming in gets uh, you know more and more likely. Now, he would be a great signing. He's a fantastic player, um, brilliant free kick specialist, and a really good player. How will he adapt to the Premier League? Who knows? But certainly, if he goes and bangs another one in for Russia in their next game and has a really good tournament, that price is going to keep going up and up. Um, but Arsenal still retaining an interest in Alexander Golovin. Lucas Torreira. Now, this is one that, uh, again, it's been spoken about a lot. It's happening, bar a disaster. Um, the fees have been agreed. There are rumours that Arsenal officials have been over here and done medicals and things like that. And there's a lot of rumours that that could be announced as early as sometime this week. I'm not sure on it because uh, obviously he's playing at a World Cup and you know when you're playing at a World Cup the last thing you need is uh, lots of distractions um, but uh, a lot of people saying that that you know a lot of people in the know are saying that that's going to get done this week and get announced this week and Lucas Torreira will be that defensive midfielder that we've been after for so so long he could be coming into Arsenal now, what about Emil Forsberg? We're going to get a chance to take a look at Emil Forsberg today. He's playing for Sweden. Um, Sweden, of course, uh, get their World Cup underway against South Korea. And Emil Forsberg will play, be playing for them. Uh, valued at around about £50 million. He recently signed, I think, last year a new contract with RB Leipzig that keeps him there till 2022. But Arsenal said to be really interested in him. If they do go for him, he would be probably represent that big sign-in um, for them, he'd be probably the, I don't know if he's a marquee, but he would be that big name signing for them this summer. Now, we're gonna get a chance to take a look at him um, closely today. He's a very, very good player, can play anywhere across the front three. He's Sweden's main man. Oh, it's not Zlatan, of course, they didn't bring Zlatan Ibrahimovic to this tournament. Emil Forsberg is the main man, and it's gonna be really interesting to see how he gets on in the tournament if he's able to step up and again if he does step up price goes up but Emil Forsberg in action today and it's going to be really interesting to see him um and also interesting to see if Arsenal will pursue this uh, supposed interest that they have in Emil Forsberg and making him their big signing of the summer and uh, finally remember I've been speaking every day about um a player that I've seen the day before that I look at and I say yeah you know what dream signing, dream signing for Arsenal. And that player from yesterday that I'm going to go for is a, a goalkeeper. And that's uh, Alisson, the guy in goal for Brazil. This guy, is a, he's, I really rated him yesterday. Cool, composed, brilliant at playing the ball out at the back. Um, a real top goalkeeper. And, um, you know, somebody like him at Arsenal would change the dynamics of Arsenal. Would be able to pass the ball out from the back we'd be you know better than what we do at the moment he's got great distribution as you saw yesterday and uh, he's a good shot stopper and all round considered one of the best goalkeepers around price would be about 60 to 60 to 70 million pounds so that's a lot of money but listen if you want to win things as we saw with the Lucas Carrius incident um, in the final of the uh, Champions League you have to have a top quality goalkeeper It'd be unlikely that he'd leave Roma to come to Arsenal because there's no Champions League football. That's something that's really setting us back. But if I could have that dream signing from yesterday, I'd have to go for Alisson, the goalkeeper from Brazil. Really, really top player. Um, do you guys agree with me or did you see somebody else yesterday that you think realistically, more, more realistic than totally, you know, no point in mentioning Neymar because you know there's no way. Uh, plus he had a terrible game as well. But. Um, let me know, leave it in the comments below. Listen, thanks for watching the show today. We're going to be uh, back tomorrow. Don't forget to check out all of the, uh, our content that we've had from over there. Later on, uh, check out the Bias Premier League show with me and Troops. Uh, we're going to be taking a look back at um, performances of uh, yesterday, Mesut Ozil, Lish Steiner, also um, Granit Xhaka, Iwobi. So don't forget to check out uh, the Bias Premier League show. And uh, don't forget, Subscribe here to Arsenal Fan TV. Tonight, we'll be at the England game. Lots of coverage of that. Talking to some fans after the game. And hopefully, Welbeck gets on the pitch and scores.